Be honest, how often do you go back to the things that you saved somewhere on Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn and you actually reference that or use it? Oh, it's not a simple answer. Every business and team should have their own AI knowledge base internally and dedicated people contributing to it. The key problem is overabundance of information and noise and teams operating in silos. In this video, I want to share with you the system that we developed in our company, how we centralize the information that anybody individually comes across how we capture that, how we filter that, and how we use it. Hi, I'm Gotta Go. I help businesses and people adopt faster and transform smarter with innovative AI solutions. First thing is filtering your sources, kind of training your social media algorithm towards the content that you would like to watch, maybe separating different accounts, your professional one with your personal one. And here I'm talking about Instagram, Twitter, and even TikTok. Even though I don't use TikTok myself, it's not healthy for me. Podcasts, newsletters, LinkedIn, articles on the web, you name it. One optional source that I would like to share with you is Feedly. It's not for free, it comes at the cost, and that's why I mean it's optional. Feedly basically aggregates all the news feeds that you are interested in in one place. Next thing is how do you capture all this information? There is a bazillion of ways to do that, and I tried automations, I tried different project management softwares, and those all work. But I personally don't like to use 10 different tools uh, and then pay small subscriptions for each. So I boiled it down to three, of which one is completely free. And capturing is not only how you capture, but also where do you capture all that content. My personal preference is Notion, but we also use Obsidian for a different type of purpose. And you can check out Joe Rosabon, who is my co-founder. He breaks down in his channel the whole Obsidian setup that we went through. So in this video, we're going to use Notion. For capturing the content on desktop, I use Readwise. Readwise costs a little bit of money, but it's so universal and so useful. It has become my go-to. Second way I capture content on desktop is Save to Notion Chrome extension. This allows you to develop templates, how you capture content. And the way it captures content is so amazing because it not only captures the URL, but it also grabs everything from that web page. And this is going to be extremely useful when we talk about Notion AI features like Q&A, where you can ask questions about your whole database and it gives you answers. So the richer the information that you capture, the better answers you will get. And of course, majority of us are on our mobiles. There is a brilliant way to capture content both on Android and iPhone. You just simply take a piece of content, no matter what it is, and share it to Notion. Now, of course, when you capture all this content, it has to go somewhere. You have to set up databases in Notion. And this is my database, but I'm going to show you how you can create new one. When you start with Notion, this is going to be your account here. And we are going to create a new page, say database. Now you have a couple of options. So space is going to recall AI features. We don't want that now. But the slash is going to call functions. We say database and we will do a full page. And I'm going to call this database test. So now you can set up send to Notion new template, select first of all database, and we are going to do SymphMinds Media, say database test. Here you go. And it's going to pull all the columns that you have created here. And then we do save. For example, you are on a desktop, you can just send to Notion, select your database. It's going to pull in this case an image, and we will say save. Here you go, you have a new item in your new database. Readwise has native integration with Notion. First of all, you will have to choose your workspace where you want Readwise database to be created. In this case, we have SymphMinds Media, and then you have a couple of settings to play with. And this is how that database will start looking. It categorizes for your content into articles, podcasts, books, and even tweets. Anything that you highlight across the internet goes into that database, but as well as your highlights from Kindle, also highlights from podcasts, which I will show you how to do as well. The most brilliant way to capture the highlights or summaries from the podcast is installing this app like Snippet. On this app, to make a highlight of a podcast, if you're listening, you need to tap three times on your AirPods and it creates a highlight, sends it to Readwise and sends that to Notion. Amazing. So now, of course, we are not here to hoard the information and just let it sit and never do anything with that. You have to develop systems, how you're going to review that information and what happens with that. In this process, I like to see that information that I capture is like ideas in an ether that could die on its own, could be an inspiration or turn into the whole piece of content on its own. 
And then we have our central database connected to every single different channel as well as our individual databases. So the way it works that I can go into my brain dump and I'm working on a video about robots and I captured Amazon robots, for example. Notion allows you to create relationships between different databases. So now I can just click and say, robots and here you go my project is here the good thing is if i go and open this project or any person in my team opens this project they can reference and see every single resource that i captured related to this video or idea i can also see joe's readwise and i can search if he has anything on robots and look at this he does so I can go and take a look at this piece of content. Also, if I got inspired by a new piece of content that I saw, I can create new project. Let's call it AI surveillance and I click new. Here you go. We have the whole new project and now I can set up the publish date. I can set up to which channel it has to go. On top of that, I also have my tools database here. For example, if I'm working on this project where I bought AI glasses, I can check in a database if I have this company and I can make an association here. When we talk about system, I think there are two ways. It's very useful to have dedicated time daily that you go back to and review and maybe leave notes or create new projects related to that. Second one is maybe weekly together with your team, reviewing and sharing ideas and what everyone captured. And this is when Notion AI features come so handy. And you probably can already tell I'm a huge fan of Notion because it's so customizable and every single person likes to work differently. And I've been a fan of Notion ever since I came across a video from Ali Abdal. It's now like probably five years that I've been using Notion. And I'm so happy to say that this is the portion of a video sponsored by Notion. The ability that you can ask questions about your whole database, not only on a basic level that it's useful because you can just quickly find stuff in a smart way, but also you can ask what is your team reading? What is the deadlines? What is the project, um, the status of a project and much more. And here are important pieces of advice from our own experience. When you set everything up, don't just deploy a bunch of people into this. Start with the people who are super, super at the core of AI and just slowly start building that. So for example, in our case, we didn't plug every single person from our company. We are starting with myself and Joe because we are the ones creating content. If you haven't figured yet, this video is also an onboarding video for our new team member. So, hey guys, if you're using the capture content to create new content, this is going to be super useful because again, Notion has so many AI features who help you summarize, help you write content. You can pre-prompt with little buttons where you can click and it literally just writes down the content as you would like that to do. And then you combine this with a calendar feature which Notion just launched and that stands as an app on its own. I completely personally abandoned any other calendar from this point. And the reason we as a business went with Notion at the end, we were testing different AI solutions, different project management solutions. And one thing, because they've been around for a while, you can integrate them with a lot of things. So that's always a plus. You kind of can trust them that they are not going to go poof like a lot of AI startups. Um, they keep innovating and keep adding value. For the team to adopt project management, management solution and actually use it, it has to be customizable because every single person likes to work differently and likes to manage their things differently. You can customize Notion however you want, sky's the limit. They are free to use for all these years. I never paid for Notion, but now with these AI features and all the value that Notion provides, I'm happy to pay that a little premium on top. And then of course we get to the calendar, which is amazing because that works both with your content and your projects and your any other calendars allows you so many functionalities, which I cover in this video.